All right. So joining us once again for Starbucks on deck is Anthony Murphy. Anthony, welcome back. You are uh, nice little background there. Where are you at, buddy? I, I am su in sunny Florida, where it is very warm here. <laughs> and oh, that's right. Not, you, yeah. as a Louisiana guy, <laughs> can't take it. Virginia, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, my yeah. bad. Vir Virginia, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, Same. but still, like, I mean, it, it, it's hot in Virginia. Yeah, it can be. It's not this hot. It's not. Um, I feel like it's not like, hot I get, right now. Like, I even, mean. I lucked out and there was like a really nice breeze like the entire week. So like it wasn't too bad, but I did get a sunburn on the top of my head like the, after the first day I was here, so, which I didn't know that was a thing. Like for, I don't know, me, crazy me thinking like my top of the head, like my hair protects the top of your head or something like that. But no, it, it, it didn't. I got a sunburn on the top of my head the first day here. And um, yeah. <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to Florida. That's how my week started. Yeah, that's how my week started. Well, with that being said, yeah, like you've been here for the entire week. You talked about it um, the last show, right? That's what mm -hmm. we had as pre-recorded then because you were flying into Florida. And yeah. uh, so you've been there all week. I said, like, mm -hmm. let's focus on that. I know we talk about prospects, you know, all around the, the farm and whatnot. But like you've mm -hmm. seen these guys firsthand now. Let's, let's kind of focus on that. Um, let's start with the hitting because okay. I think that's the most intriguing thing. Not that these guys are anywhere close. I mean, I don't know. They, we might call up. You're Donnie here in a, in a minute to, to, to get these bats going. <laughs> but uh, but no, let's talk about hitting to start with. Um, so, like, what have you been noticing? Any guys stand out for you that uh, we want to discuss today? So, like, if we wanted to start, like, all the way down in the complex, one guy that, like, I hadn't heard too much of to, to go into it, um, not many guys, they didn't bring the hitting on the hitting side. There's a lot of repeaters as far as the complex. Um, they only brought, like, two or three new guys up. One of the new guys, Carlos Caro, um, play, uh, infielder, plays mostly second. Um, he hit a home run the, the Monday that I got in. I didn't get to go to that game. Um, but he's five hits already on the this, this season. He has a home run double. He had, had three hits in the two games that I did see him play. Uh, hitting the ball pretty pretty hard. Lots of lots and lots of contact. Not, not much swing and miss in there. Um, you know, you, at this point with the hitting struggles, I guess you just kind of find someone to kind of latch onto and, and kind of hope that something happens with it. I think that's what you're really doing with most of the guys in the complex right now. But he was a guy that not really too much was known on him going into to it. And he's definitely one of the biggest standouts, I think, so far early season as far as the complex. Okay. Yeah, interesting. 19 years old, batting 385 right now, over 1,100 OPS. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. And, and again, like what's nice about this name you never heard of, so maybe someone to mm – -hmm kind of monitor keep your eye on here for a little bit yeah that, that you know we don't get to see too much like complex action and stuff like that so it's nice to see some of these like guys that we've never seen before and and like he he was one of the guys that just like immediately stuck out and you know this is a lineup that has like you know sor Suaro and and Gordani, de los santos and tony blanco some like notable names that like you know even more casual Pirates fans would would probably recognize and stuff like that. Right. And he and he's kind of standing out over top of those guys right now, too. That's interesting. Cause I think, yeah, like Yordani De Los Santos, uh certainly one of those names that stands out. Um, you know, like last year we're talking with um with uh Eric from from Fangraphs, Longenhagen, you know, and mm -hmm. he really talked him up, you know, the, the exit velocities and how he really, really likes them. And you know, it was one of those guys that you kind of watched all year long and it's kind of intriguing, you know, like, is he going to be the real deal? You can't really go too deep coming into the complex league. It's so far down there. Right. But yeah, you know, it, it, that's one of the guys that stands out. Um, look, like, maybe talk about him a little bit. Like I know right now he's struggling only batting two eleven, but, uh, what did you see out of him so far? So like, d I think defensively, he, he's probably one of the better defensive players that I've seen in the minors. He had like this, uh, the first game that I saw, he was playing second. He made like this nice little sliding like grab to scoop up a ball and make the th make you know really nice turn, really nice throw. He played shortstop at the end of the week. I think it was on Saturday, and he had like a, one of those like Derek Jeter esque in the hole grab jump throw kind of things. It was okay. It had, yeah, it had everyone like you know like owing oh, and it like it was beautiful play, amazing play. He had a home run. Uh, it, it was at one of the games that I, I didn't get get to go to, but there's video of it. Eric, Eric Birdland had, had a video of it. I know I shared it on, on Twitter. 
But like when he makes contact, like he's struggling a little bit with the contact, but like he's one of the guys, he has like that prototypical frame that you want to see out of like a, a ball player. And when he makes contact, like it sounds different off the bat. Like you, you, you can tell it's him. So like, there's still a lot of stuff there and he's still 18, 19 years old. So like, there's right. still a lot of time for him to kind of work stuff out. It's like, I, I feel like at the, at this level, you're just kind of looking for little pieces here and there of, of what like a major league ball player might be. And he has like a lot of those. It's just a matter of like consistency, like uh, doing it on a daily basis more often and like he'll he'll have a really good game here but then also he's like flailing at a lot of breaking pitches and stuff like that so but it's 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 there it's there it's just it's just the time that it'll take to kind of do it on you know, more regularly gotcha well we're not we're not patient here so no no no, no. i've noticed i've noticed <laughs> get him up <laughs> um but yeah, again, that's that's probably like the biggest name I would say in there. But another one, like you said, Tony Blanco, we actually saw him when we were down there in Bradenton. Mm-hmm. And I'll say it wasn't pretty. Uh, a guy for contact issues. It felt like even in batting practice, he was having contact yeah. issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is batting 167 right now, OPS of 583. Just one hit, six at-bats. Um, yeah. I mean, again, you're not seeing a whole lot in six at-bats, but what's yeah. your thoughts? I, I ha- So I didn't get to see him play there, but... The, one of the games that he did play, I did talk to to Wilbur, who's a who's a writer also on the site. He was at that game, and like they, he said that they just gave him like a steady dose of not fastballs, and then it just wasn't really pretty. And that was kind of the the, the kind of the book on him heading coming stateside. I I, I think they're going to be real cautious with him as far as like playing time. You know, the Pirates the Pirates really value like the, the backfields work and, you know, like the non games that they, they, so I don't think we're going to see him play in a lot of games. Like I think to date right now, oh, he's played gotcha. in like, he's only played in like two of the six games that they've played. Right. So I, I wouldn't expect him like an everyday kind of thing there. They'll sprinkle him in here and there just to kind of get him used to playing stateside and stuff like that. And then maybe next year we'll see more of a, heavy dose of him but i like i said i didn't see him play but he walked past me uh at pirate city and that is a giant human yeah i'll yeah. put it to you this way that's literally how we acknowledge that that's tony blanco yeah. because yeah, you, you, see... you know go ahead so every everyone else we were kind of like they would come on the field and you know like this is still a newer roster so it's kind of like okay what number is he and we'd all race to pull up the phone and get the roster and okay well that's that's that guy that's that guy he walks by and like okay well that's 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 tony blanco that's, right there was no there's no question there yeah yeah like like in in uh you know spring when they're doing this it was early in spring we were down there in mm-hmm. like, actually february also so i mean there was no none of the guys in major league was there it was all mm-hmm. the young guys and this time we knew it was the younger of the younger guys too that yeah. were there and you see this massive specimen and yeah. at that time like they don't even have numbers they're just out there and uh yeah you don't have the opportunity to like look things up but it's like that's got to be tony Blanc. <laughs> yeah yeah, there, yeah um, there was no doubting it and then when he saw the swing and miss in batting practice like yeah that's that's him <laughs> so. yeah so that's it's so it's pretty much so far like i said i didn't see him but he's i would say as advertised like the the okay. raw power is amazing and you can see the raw power he, i mean the one hit that he that he does have is it was a double so there's a little power there. There's the po- power is obviously there. It's just going to be, can they get him to make more consistent contact? So, so probably like a slower development for him for sure. Then. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't expect him to be anywhere near a kind of a fast track. He may be a guy that he's here at 18. He'll play in the complex league probably next year as well. And then it'll be kind of like a wait and see like Bradenton as far as 2026 kind of thing. Okay. Um, and let's go to Suero, Estar. So, mm-hmm. you know, you saw him. He's obviously acquired last year uh, at the trade mm-hmm. deadline. Some intrigue with him. Yeah. Yes, I love the word intrigue, but definitely some mm-hmm. intrigue with him. Uh, he's got 22 plate appearances, played in all six games. Mm-hmm. What do you got? I, so like, the so this, this is, this is where like, I love the like in game, like going to watch the players and all. Cause like going to the field and just watching him, like, uh, he was my favorite player to watch there pretty much the entire time. He makes such effortless contact 
with with the ball. It flies off his bat. He hit a, a triple that was like he had multiple balls over 100 miles an hour. Oh wow! Exit okay. velocity wise, so like it's such easy power. He, the long strides. He had a triple, and it felt like he just like glided all the way to third. Like he, it's amazing to watch in the outfield. The swing is beautiful. And then you look, kind of look, go back and look. And then it's like, oh, okay, well, he hit that triple. And then he struck out like the other three plate appearances. So, like, he's another young guy. Like, you're kind of just looking for the, the tools. The tools are there. Now it's can you make the adjustments required to, to continue moving? But I, I feel like he's probably was probably the most intriguing player to watch as far as like tool set wise while I was down there. Okay. That's cool. And I mean, he actually is the youngest of the ones we spoke of so far, still yeah. 18, not turning yeah. 19 until August. Mm-hmm. So good, good, good to hear. Uh, and I, I think the last one I want to definitely talk about Connor Delgado. That's the JT Brubaker trade. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it came from the Yankees. It's a prospect. I think a lot of people look yeah. at him. It's like, you know, it's very limited because of the power. He's a tiny mm-hmm. dude, and I mean that's listed. You saw him in person. I don't know how tiny he truly he's, is. Maybe he's a little shorter than we even think. I, 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 if they listed him five seven, like that, that I, I wouldn't be surprised if they were being generous with the five okay. seven on there. <laughs> so, that, that that was a that was a small guy on there. But um, Delgado was just everything off the bat was just hit hard, and like there were just a group of us around, and we we're like. Well, all the scouting reports said like he had no power because he was small, but then like his first four batted balls were all over like 100 miles an hour. So it's like, okay, where well, where was the disconnect? Did, did they just like look at him and say, okay, well, he has no power? He hit seven home runs in the complex league last year, so and that's not an easy thing to do. Like, so where where was the disconnect here on it? Like he hit two home runs and two doubles last week. And like, just everything seemed like it was getting hit hard. I actually had a chance to talk to uh, Jim Horner, the uh, Bradenton manager. And he, the way he put it, like he joked about it, it's like, well, we heard about his speed and we've been wanting to see his speed. So it'd be nice for him to stop hitting extra bases so we can actually <laughs> see him steal a big base. And, <laughs> right, and right. then was it his first at bat that night after I talked to him, he hit a double his first at bat. And I just like kind of chuckled at it. And then they had him steal third base anyways on there. So it's like, okay, well, this guy's fast too. So it's kind of like, okay, well, there might be something here with it. Like he struggled a little bit with off-speed pitch- pitches this week. It's his first first week at, at like a new level. So yeah. um, I think the, the thing we want to see there is obviously to kind of make the adjustment to, to handle that. Um, draw a few walks here and there. He didn't walk at all. But um, yeah. Yeah, it, it for if first impressions are a big thing, right? And and that was a pretty good first impression he made in, in the organization. Yeah, like you know, I want to, like I said, talk about him a little bit because you're right. You know, he's had three home runs, one in the complex and two in mm-hmm. Bradenton. Um, mm-hmm. it, it appeared like like he's small, but there was power potential. Like, like I want to say, yeah. like the, and the Yankees, like they talk about the Yankees has had him in the weight room like all last year. Like that's what they work on, and he didn't get any bigger, more or less. And they were like, "Oh, well, <laughs> screw it, you're just not going to be that guy." And then they traded for JT Brubaker. But then, like you said, like he comes over, and now, granted, it's a complex league. Then it's Bradenton, but it's three home runs from the guy who's like four foot, I'm um, five foot five, and just told like he has absolutely zero power. And like you said, like now is it okay? Well, what, what is the deal here? Because it feels like he has the tools to be a major leaguer, but Mm -hmm. because of the power, it's going to really put a damper on his ceiling. And it's like, well, if the power's there, is, is he potentially like an actual real prospect here? I like, I I don't think there were many people that I was sitting around or that I've talked to that didn't come away, like very impressed with, with his performance over, over the week. Um, he has a very like very solid like base. Like his legs are you could tell like okay. he's not a big guy, but like he's he's built in the legs, which I, I think helps a lot with, with that. So but like I mean he he's quick. He played a lot better defense than than I kind of figured. He made a couple of good plays at short. Still probably just like a second baseman at, like once once he gets the majors, maybe he's a guy you can throw out at short, like in desperation moments or or, or whatnot. But um 
not someone who's who's going to be limited to second base probably until you get to that major league point on that. You can probably keep him at short as he moves up the minors, which helps him get more at bats and, and experience and stuff like that. So, but yeah, he, I, I was excited to that. The fact that they were moving him up like immediately to Brandon, like yeah. pretty much as soon as I got there. Um, and we kind of figured that happened because they sent down a, they sent a, an infielder back to the complex league, like the day before the Marauders started their schedule. So it was like, okay, well this kind of, makes sense that it's going to happen. And um, yeah, like I said, I don't think there are anybody that didn't come away impressed with, with what he did that this week. And that's, like I said, that's very interesting because again, like when the trade happened, when JT Bru- Brubaker gets traded for a player to be mm-hmm. named later, and then mm-hmm. you see in, the parts added international money to the deal. And it's like, okay, there's gotta be some of the targeting. Is it kind of making mm-hmm. sense that maybe there's some reasons that they targeted this, this guy and they wanted this guy specifically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, I mean, you kind of feel like he he can fit their mold with it. You know, he hard swinger, you can pull the ball. Just there's a lot. I, there's a lot more power potential in the bat than I than I think a lot of people uh, realized. And, and maybe maybe that's what the pirates saw. Maybe they saw more in there than what others thought. But yeah, they it, it looks like they. Brew break, you know, the you need as much pitching as you can get through a, se- a season. So giving up on someone like Brubaker or something like that, who still has some control left and all, all that, even though he is coming back from Tommy John, you kind of thought that maybe they could be getting something, someone interesting with it. And right. Looks like they did. Okay. Good, good, good news. It's all, and again, like it's, it's still what five games. So we're not going to yeah, hold you yeah. to it, but just for no. the five games that you've seen, Maybe there's something to this. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah. I don't think there's much more he could have done as far as first impression wise than what he did there. I mean, obviously maybe swing and miss a little bit less, but like also it's his first week at a new level and the amount of swing and miss that I saw this, this week it like, I'm not overly concerned. <laughs> he could so. hit the ball over the wall less so he could steal some bases is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what I, he could have done better. Singles. Yeah. yeah, more okay. singles. More singles. More singles. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool. Um, let's get to the pitching side. So I don't I don't think there's like a whole lot there that's like really intriguing as far as names. There's definitely mm-hmm. one guy. Um yeah. yeah, he became like a household name, I feel like, among people who like follow pirates prospects. Uh mm-hmm. talk about David. First name basis, uh, David. <laughs> David. David. So I mean it looked pretty good. He got up to 98 with the, the fastball. Um, I think he averaged about like 95, 96 with it. There's some good break with it. It was really just like fastball slider, fastball cutter kind of kind of thing. Um, he didn't get any like whiffs with the fastball, but they didn't really square anything up. Like they fouled like seven or eight of his fastballs off. So they weren't making good contact with it. Um, he's he, he is the makings of someone who could be a guy. Like with pitchers like this low, he he has like obviously the workings of like a good fastball. Really, what it's going to come down to is working in a secondary pitch, and then like if you're hoping that he can be a starter, like a third pitch, then I I, I think I don't want to get excited over like one inning and stuff like that. But that was it was a solid. He walked one. He walked one. He gave up a hit and he struck out the rest. So he struck yeah. out the side in, in the inning that, that I saw him. So, I mean, I, you can't ask for too much more than that. Um, right. Good, good delivery throws from like a three quarters slot. Um, you know, pirates kind of like those guys that have the arm trending a little bit on the lower side. Um, it, it looked good. It looked good. I, I was impressed. And like, it's, he's definitely someone who could be a guy. And, and like, I think the pirates will take their time with him. I don't think he'll throw that many innings this year and he could end up like back at the complex again next year. And that's when you really start stretching them out and seeing what you have there at that point with him. Okay. Yeah. Good deal. And again, like with Matoma, like he, he came onto the scene last year, a 17 mm-hmm. year old and you hear he, he hit a hundred and it's like, well, what's going on here? Then it's like, well, maybe he didn't really hit a hundred. So it's encouraging to hear you say, it, and yeah, like it has been documented. Like he, he was hitting 98. So, I mean like the hundred potential, like that's certainly in his repertoire. Then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, I'm sure, I'm sure he probably 
could like there's no doubt like i mean he hit 98 two three maybe four times or something like that so there's there's probably no doubt like on a really good day if you get him out there there's probably triple digits in in there with them the the it, it, it's another thing like consistency because he he went anywhere from all the way down to from 93 all the way up to 98 they're like the the for like the guy who people who like like the metrics and stuff like that there's pretty good like induced vertical br- break on it like he went he was anywhere from like really well above average with that to about like average to below average so there's a lot of inconsistencies with it so but like i mean you're 18 years old this, that was his second inning of, of stateside baseball. So, right. Yeah. Okay. No, it's still encouraging, right? Like, struck out four, yeah. faced eight batters, uh, mm-hmm. that type of velocity. Um, yeah. I feel like there's been a lot of people with their eyes on him already. So, certainly a guy you yeah. keep your eye on this year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Xander Meath. Meath, I think, was probably the the guy that I was really looking forward to, to see down there. Like, I'm, I'm a big, stickler for like the the prep high school picks and um guys with like lower arm slots and stuff like that i've kind of bought myself into that that kind of philosophy like with what the pirates are trending for um fastball looked really good um he's like a two two seam guy it's like a it's a flat like two seam so uh, with like a lot of horizontal break like he like 20 inch like regularly with 20 inches of uh horizontal break on the on the fastball so it, it's going to be a pitch that's going to be very hard to to barrel up. Um, he allowed some solid contact, obviously, when it got left over the plate kind of thing. But he went through like a stretch to where like he was painting the corner pretty regu- um, pretty consistently. And like the Orioles hitters had like no answer, no answer for it. It was nothing but like weak induced contact the entire time on there. So and and like if he, when he tunnels that with like the the slider and the and the changeup and stuff like that. Like he he could be a guy that he may not be truly challenged until he gets to like double A. I, okay. I think I think yeah. with that kind of arm slot, like the arm slot was even lower than I originally what it originally seemed like. Like it it looked almost literally sidearm that it was coming oh, out. Wow. Of. Okay. And he was going ninety seven, ninety eight with, with with it. So someone like that, lower level level guys, like they they don't have a shot against that kind of stuff. So the only question, like with him, do you see him being like a, a fast riser to double A? The the biggest thing with him right now is like, like I mean, and you could say this with a very high percentage of the uh, the kids down there. It's like it, it's the fastball command will just kind of slip, and then like he'll go on like a eight or nine pitch stretch where like there's only one strike mixed into there. So I mean that's not uncommon with with kids. There's there's some kids are like more advanced at, at that age. So I, it wouldn't shock me if he got, especially with the complex season ending so soon, if he got a little bit of time in Bradenton at the end of the year. Um, and then like next year's he go does like the full season there. Um, but yeah, I could see, I could see it. I could see him being, maybe he doesn't rise fast, but he's the guy who the fans are going to be like, why is he still here constantly? Okay. Like push him, push him kind of thing. Because his numbers will probably look a lot better than what the performance actually is. Just because gotcha. it's going to be hard for a lot of hitters to make solid contact against him. That that he'll constantly put up he may not put up like high strikeout numbers initially, but like hitters aren't gonna hit the ball very hard. So like the numbers the ERA, that kind of stuff will all look good. So we'll have people calling for him to get promoted. But like they'll still be like little stuff that that if you really watch him, he can work on. Okay. But, so he may not be someone who rises fast, but he's going to do well in the lower levels. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I asked that because again, like with Solomito, he he went rather quickly for me, you know, and like Bubba Chandler, yeah. you could say so as well. I know he was after Solomito, but he was mm-hmm. going to be a work in progress. And the fact that he was in Double A when he was was kind of yeah. encouraging. So I don't know if there's maybe some similarities you thought with Meath as well to like to them or. Or not? He so. could. He could probably. He could probably follow the same timeline as them. Like, I, it wouldn't surprise me if he kind of followed mm-hmm. the same, same thing. So, finish that. I mean, probably more so the the Bubba, probably Bubba Chandler route kind of thing. Okay. Maybe he finishes out in Bradenton this year. Um, Towards I think the end, he's team double A. Yeah. Year. Okay. Yeah, that kind of thing. Cool. 
Um, and then I guess outside of that, anyone else that you wanted to bring up or discuss? Maybe we haven't heard about or talked. Um, I mean, like on the on the hitting side, like there's 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 a couple guys. I know I know I've talked about him a couple times on here, but Omar Alfonso, he had nine hits and like seven walks this, last week. You love talking about him. <laughs> I love, like I'll talk about him at any chance. You know, we have our own segment of just that. We're gonna have just, this I segment, mean, you, and we're gonna I mean, finish you, the show with just your Alfonso. I mean, uh, like Skeens isn't here, here anymore for us to end the segment. Yes, on. there <laughs> you go. Right, right. <laughs> so we'll change it to the Alfonso segment. But I mean, they they have like like I said, it's. We try to on the site. We try not to get too excited about any hitters until they get to Double A for like obvious reasons, kind of thing. It's fair, but right. Bradenton has like a nice little core of players that are real, like hitting wise. That are there's a lot to like there. Like if you're looking for pieces and stuff like that, and and the performance is getting there. The more they're getting comfortable, and you can see it now. They they swept this week. They've won like 10, 10 games in a row. They've won eleven to twelve. Like things are starting starting to click down there for them, and there's some exciting names down there to kind of to kind of monitor. And it was it was exciting to get to see them all in action. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, Anthony, we'll let you get going here. Uh, appreciate you coming on as always, and uh, we'll see you next week. Sounds good. So as always, follow you underscore. Murphy underscore underscore Murphy 88, yeah. correct? Oh, yeah. <laughs> correct. <laughs> and check him out at Bucks on Deck Substack. Anthony, we'll see you later. All right, man. Take it easy. You too.